The COVID-19 pandemic has been one of the most destructive forces in modern times. The virus has reached every corner of the globe and wrecked havoc upon billions of lives. We know this only too well. Slowly and tentatively, the world is starting to come back from the worst of the pandemic. And as deadly and as devastating as it's been, COVID still wasn't the worst virus to sweep the earth. In fact, the Black Death remains the most disastrous pandemic ever recorded. The Black Death raged from around 1347 to 1351 across much of Asia, Europe, and Northern Africa. It is thought to have wiped out 25 million people in Europe alone, which was over a third of its population. The total number of world fatalities is estimated to be anywhere between 75 to 200 million people, in comparison to COVID's 6.5 million in a drastically larger population than existed in the 14th century. So what was it exactly? How did, how did it spread? And what were the consequences? The Black Death was a form of the bubonic plague. It started off in the form of a bacteria known as Yersinia pestis. The bacteria lives in small rodents and leads to plague in humans if they're infected. During the Black Death, it's thought that Yersinia pestis bacteria spread from rats to humans, often via fleas. After fleas fed on infected rodents, they then jumped to humans, immediately spreading the infection in the form of a deadly plague. Rats and fleas were virtually everywhere during the Middle Ages, and sailors traveling from Asia to Europe on rat-infested ships soon brought the plague with them. Once a person was infected, the bacteria could be transmitted through the air, by touch, and even by coming into contact with an area previously occupied by a plague carrier. Aside from what it was, however, Let's look at exactly where the Black Death originated and how it spread. It is believed that the plague originated in China in the early 1330s. In the Chinese northeastern province of Hopai, a plague broke out that killed around 5 million people, which was two-thirds of the population at the time. From here, the Black Death made its way west via trade routes, like the Silk Road. People became infected in India, North Africa, and Central Asia. In the 1340s, Mongol chief Kipchak Janebeg led an attack on the Genoan city of Kaffa, which was a major trading center on the Black Sea. Janeberg was able to besiege the Italians. However, he soon lost control of the situation as his men became severely affected by the plague. Soldiers were dying in vast quantities and Janeberg was forced to pull out. Before doing so, though, he made a final devastating call that was to have massive consequences. In what was probably one of the earliest examples of biological warfare, the Mongol ruler decided to use his catapults to fling the plague-infested corpses of his men into the city of Jaffa. The Italians were already living in dire conditions due to being besieged, and they too soon became severely infected, as the Mongol corpses quickly spread the pandemic. From here, Genoese ships took the Black Death to western ports in the Mediterranean, and the plague soon spread inland across much of Europe. By around 1348, Italy, Spain, and France had all been exposed to this merciless pandemic. It soon spread north to Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Holland. Eventually, a ship from Calais carried the plague to England and deaths began to soar. The effects were sudden and they were horrific. Typical symptoms included swelling all over the body, with black apple-sized boils that continuously leaked blood. Fevers, severe pains, and vomiting soon followed with death coming in a matter of days, if not hours. Some victims would be fine in the morning, contract the Black Death during the afternoon, and be dead the following day. People thus fled areas with high numbers of infections, with family members even deserting sick loved ones to save themselves. If a house was known to have infected inhabitants, it was burned to the ground. There was no knowledge of how to treat the plague, other than ancient methods like bathing in vinegar and herbs. Doctors tried lancing boils, which was not only ineffective, but doubly dangerous. As a result, medical practitioners simply refused to see anyone suffering from the plague. Because people were powerless to treat or prevent the Black Death, many assumed that it was an act of God, punishing anyone who had sinned or lived an immoral life. This led to outbursts of anti-Semitism across much of Europe, and many turned to the church, hoping that prayer would lead to a blessing from the plague. When this failed, it led to a plummeting in faith and a decline in the power of the medieval church. Entire towns and villages were just wiped clean. 
urban areas suffered more than rural areas due to the congested populations and greater numbers of disease-spreading rodents and fleas. This was no guarantee of safety, though, as the pandemic spread deep into the more remote regions, infecting livestock and pets. So huge was the number of dying that many were buried in mass graves, known as plague pits. These have been found across Europe, sometimes with over 100 skeletons in the remains. By 1400, the population of England alone was estimated to have halved since a century earlier. By only 1350, at least half of Italy's population had just died. Paris lost approximately 50,000 people in less than a year, and it took some countries another 80 to 100 years to replace their populations. In the late 1340s, the Black Death continued to spread, cutting a gorge through Scandinavian and Baltic countries. The pandemic kept on flaring through the 14th century, via the treacherous trade routes running between Asia and Europe. As a result of the devastation brought about by the Black Death, ongoing conflicts and wars ceased almost immediately. And so did international trade. Although it kick-started again after the worst of the plague had finished in the early 1350s. Surprisingly, there were some positives to come out of the Black Death. With the massive drop in populations, landowners suddenly found themselves lacking laborers and workers to farm on their land. Labor is in very high demand, and the supply was drastically limited. This enabled the peasant class to demand higher wages and just better conditions in general. Many landowners were reluctant, but soon realized that the peasants had the bargaining power. While many peasants had previously worked in exchange for a land space on which to live, wages were now being offered. These wages gradually increased, and the laboring classes began to enjoy higher and higher incomes and more spending power for food and clothing. The Black Death also led to a trend that we're all too familiar with. Social distancing. Joy. City officials in Sicily realized that by isolating sailors who were suspected to be infected, they would better be able to control the spread of the plague. In these cases, sailors were initially kept on their ships for 30 days. This was then increased to 40 days, a period known as Quaranta Giorni, giving birth to the term quarantine. Even with all that, nevertheless, the Black Death was by no means the only other devastating pandemic in history. From 1918 to 1920, the Spanish flu killed an estimated 50 million people worldwide, making it the second deadliest pandemic ever seen. But in the end, nothing has ever come close to the levels of mortality seen with the Black Death. And hopefully, no matter how unpredictable pandemics may be, we will never come close as we did in the horrific plague outbreak in the 1300s.